Hi guys. So this video is going to go a little bit backwards. Um, the remaining part of the notes, majority of the notes are going to be on a uh, part that's going to come after this, which is actually just the same as the honors video from last year. Um, but this is one thing that I added, um, and I wanted to go ahead and go over this first, uh, because I want to show you guys something that makes these exponential functions a little bit tricky uh, when it comes to writing the equations of them. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time looking at the graph and writing the equation, um, just because based off of your exponent properties, there's a lot of actually different ways you could write the exact same function with different bases. Um, and I want to show you guys a couple examples here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use exponent properties to rewrite both these functions with a base of 3 um, and show you how you can do that and still get the exact same graph. Um, that's going to kind of come up in what you'll see today. So this is using a lot of the stuff we did on the first day with our exponent properties. I'm going to start with this one right here with one third. So one third, um, that is the same thing as three to the negative one. So I haven't really done anything here. All I've done is rewritten one third as three to the negative one, which is the exact same thing. I haven't changed anything in any way. Well, now using exponent rules, power to a power, you can multiply that. And now I have a different function. So what that would actually happen here, these two graphs would actually create the exact same graph. So that's why we're not going to spend a lot of time today looking at the graph and writing the equation. We're mostly just going to sketch the graph to get used to what those basic points are and identifying our transformations. Um, so the video is going to talk a lot about what these transformations are, but I'm just going to show you again using exponent properties how we can rewrite them. This is one we did on the very first day. Um, 3 to the x plus 4 this would be the same thing as 3 to the x times 3 to the 4th. Um, because again, when you have the same base, you add the exponents. Well, 3 to the 4th is 81. So now we have another version of the exact same equation. So this graph, this graph, and this graph would all look the same. Um, so very interesting how kind of some of these transformations can create the same graph. All right, let's try another one. Um, again, I want to rewrite this um, as a base of 3. So 9, that's the same thing as 3 squared. Power to a power, okay, you can multiply those exponents. Well, again, using my exponent rules, um, this would be 3 to the 2x times 3 squared. Because power to a power, uh, or sorry, same basis, you add the exponents. So this would be 9 times 3 to the 2x. So this this and this would all create the same graph. Um, so again, we're not going to spend a lot of time writing the equations today. Um, you're going to see the parent function, the transformations, and sketching the graph really very similar to what we've done kind of all year um, with these transformations. So um, the rest of the video that's going to follow, um, it's going to have a blue background because it's going to be the same one as the honors one from last year, uh, but you're going to see just a lot of the same stuff with transformations, um, plotting points, etc. Hi guys, so today we are going to be doing the same thing we've done multiple, multiple times this year. And we're going to do it one more time after today as well. And that is we're going to transform a new parent function. The only difference this time, this actually is a parent function that you saw in Algebra 1. Uh, but we're going to spend a little bit more time on it, a little bit more detail of it. So we're looking at the exponential parent function. So as we talked about last class, or your last online session, uh, you guys, we talked about how the base for exponential really can be a lot of different things. Um, but if that base is greater than 1, then it's going to have the shape of the parent function we're about to draw. So the parent function really is just the base to the x power. Okay, The x is in the exponent. It could be 2 to the x. It could be 4 to the x. Probably the most common ones you'll see are 2 to the x, e to the x, and 10 to the x. But regardless of what the base is, uh, let's pick some points to plug in. So if I plug in 0, anything to the 0 power is 1. If I plug in 1, anything to the first power is itself. If I plug in 2, we would take the base and square it. If I plug in negative 1, it would become the reciprocal. And if I plug in negative 2, it would be 1 over the base squared. So then if we graph this, okay, it's going to have the same shape as the graph we talked about last class, and it's going to have that horizontal asymptote. All right, so now let's start talking about the features. Okay, so the features of this graph, the domain is naive infinity to infinity. 
The range, it's everything above the asymptote, but it does not touch that horizontal asymptote, so it's a parenthesis, zero to infinity. This graph is increasing everywhere. It is not decreasing anywhere. It's positive everywhere. It's not negative anywhere. It does not have any symmetry. It does have an asymptote. And it's really important to understand now, these exponential functions will all have one horizontal asymptote. Once we get to log graphs, it's going to have a different asymptote. And that's going to be a really important feature to distinguish between these graphs. End behavior is also a little harder to write on these. So as x approaches negative infinity, let's look and see what our graph is doing. So as my x's get smaller and smaller and smaller, those y's are getting smaller and smaller, but only to a point. They only approach the horizontal asymptote. Then as our x's get bigger and bigger and bigger, our y's get bigger and bigger and bigger and are approaching positive infinity. All right, so what we're going to do now is look at the same chart you have looked at enough times this year that you're probably sick of it at this point. But all of our transformations, okay, shift right, what that's going to look like on your exponential function. Anything that's happening in the exponent is going to be horizontal. Anything that happens out in front of the base is vertical, or outside of the base, I should say. Basically, if it's not in the exponent, it's a bit away from that base. So a shift right would be the base, and I'm gonna use a capital B for the base, just because lowercase b, we've used all year for horizontal stretch and compression, and I wanna keep that consistent. So x minus h in the exponent is a shift right. x plus h in the exponent is a shift left. Horizontal compression again in the exponent like that. And then if you have a negative in the exponent, we talked about this briefly last class when we talked about how exponential functions can show decay when they're reflected over the y. But again, that negative in the exponent is a reflection over the y-axis. All right, shifting up would be, again, outside away from the exponents. Shifting down away from the exponent. A number multiplied by the base is a vertical stretch. Okay, again, it's not part of the base. We can't actually multiply them together. That's your ver vertical stretch or compression, depending on the value. Then if you have a negative on the outside, that is a reflection over the x-axis. Keep in mind, that negative is not in the parentheses. We do not have a negative base. That's not going to be an exponential function if we do. All right, what's also a little bit different about this graph we're gonna use the same method we've used all year, where we're gonna start by shifting kind of our zero, zero point. What's different and kind of unique about this function though, if you remember, zero, zero wasn't actually a point on this graph. Zero, one was a point on this graph. The problem is we can't just shift zero, one because one is affected by stretches and compressions. All year we've been shifting that zero, zero point because zero times anything is still zero. But now that we have that one involved, we can't just shift the zero, one point. So what we're going to shift instead is our, what I'm calling the center of the asymptote, or basically your new origin. So whenever we do our shifts, we're going to shift this origin point, and everything will be in relation to that new origin point. So the way that I'll graph it is I'll just put a little star wherever that point's moved to. So it's not actually a point on our graph, but we'll still use it in relation to those parent function points that we're plotting. All right, so let's look at a couple examples. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to identify the base because the base determines what pattern we're gonna follow after we've shifted that new origin point. It's also important to remember that the base is not a transformation. You may look at this and just think, hey, that's a vertical stretch by seven because we're so used to seeing that. But seven is not a transformation, that's just the base. The only transformation this graph has is left one. Domain is gonna be really easy for exponential functions. Every exponential function has a domain of negative infinity to infinity. Range is going to be term determined by reflections and by your vertical shifts. So this graph has not shifted up or down at all. So it's just shifted left or right. So that doesn't change the range from the parent function. All right, looking at our next one. The base is E because E is what has the exponent on it. That means the 3 actually is a vertical stretch. And this graph also has shifted down 5. Shifting down 5 is going to affect our range. Domain is the same. But again, since we took that parent function, 
and we moved it down five, that range is now going to be from the asymptote, which has shifted down five, to infinity. Then the last one, that's a base of three-fourths. Transformations, that four in the exponent is a horizontal either stretch or compression because it's greater than one. That is a horizontal compression. And this graph also has shifted up one. Domain is from negative infinity to infinity. And then range is from one to infinity because it's shifted up one. Now keep in mind with this, just like we talked about last class, that base is showing decay because of that three-fourths which means the shape of this graph is not going to be going this way. It's going to be going this way. But as you plug in those points, okay, the 0, 1, the 1 base, the negative 1, 1 over the base, you'll see that in case you forget, and that'll give you a pretty good clue as to what's happening. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and actually graph this. So what we're going to do first is we're going to identify the base. That way we make sure we know the base is not a transformation. On this first one, the base is 2. Then let's list our transformations. Negative out in front, that's a reflection over the x-axis. Then we've gone left 3 and down 1. Well, left 3 and down 1, again, that's typically where we put our vertex, our point of inflection, uh, a lot of those key points. Well, that's where we're going to move our origin. So left 3 and down 1, I'm going to put, uh, that's 4, sorry. Left 3 and down 1, I'm going to put a little star. That's my new origin. So when I write my pattern, Everything's still going to be in relation to that point. That point just isn't on my graph. What that point tells us, though, is where our horizontal asymptote is. So I am going to go ahead and draw that. All right, then let's list our parent function pattern. Over 0, up 1. Right 1, up the base. In this case, the base is 2. Left 1, 1 over the base. And I'm also going to do 2 a base squared, which would just be 4 to give me another point to make this a little bit of a more accurate graph. A lot of times when you use these reciprocal points, they're going to be fractions. They're going to be really hard to see on your graph. All right, now let's apply the transformations. So this has been reflected over the x. That means that I'm going to make all those y's negative. So from that star, over 0, down 1. Right 1, down 2. Left 1 down a half, and right two, down four. And that's my exponential function. All right, domain range, and I'm also going to include end behavior. So domain here, negative infinity to infinity. Range, the lowest point on this graph is negative infinity. It keeps going until negative one. And then end behavior. As x approaches negative infinity, as my x's get smaller and smaller, the y's are getting closer to the horizontal asymptote, which is negative 1. As my x's get bigger and bigger and bigger, the y's are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and they're approaching negative infinity. All right, so let's try another one. Now on this one, you'll notice we've got that b value. Hopefully by now we're used to factoring that out. So I'm going to rewrite this is 1 half x minus 6. Because again, if you divide by 1 half, you're multiplying by 2. That means the base is e. This graph has gone right 6, up 1, and has a horizontal stretch. So I'm going to go right 6, up 1. That is my new origin. That is where my horizontal asymptote is. All right, so everything's going to be in relation to that new point that new origin. Parent function, anything to the zero power is one, anything to the first is e. And then in this one, I know it's gonna be a little hard to get these exact numbers. I'll go ahead and write this as 2.7 just so we can kind of estimate. Uh, if you want to square that, that's gonna be about 7.3. And then this is gonna be one over 2.7. And again, that's something that you kind of really wanna use a calculator probably to estimate. It's going to be about 3.37. So this one, we're not going to have super accurate points, but we're going to get the right general idea. All right, then this graph, what we need to change from our parent function was that horizontal stretch. That means I'm going to multiply those x's by 2. So from that star, over 0, up 1, 
right two, up almost three, right four, which is gonna go off my graph, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it, up 7.3, should be up there, and then left two, up 0.37. So there is my function. Oh, let me go back and do our domain and range. So domain is negative infinity to infinity. Range, the lowest y value is 1. Keeps going to infinity. And then end behavior. As my x's get smaller, they're approaching that horizontal asymptote, which has a value of 1. As your x's get bigger, your y's are getting bigger. All right. Then we got two more. Again, if you feel comfortable at this point, go ahead and pause the video, but we'll go ahead and do the same thing. We'll start by identifying the base. Our base is four. Then let's list our transformations. We've got a reflection over the X from this negative. We've got a vertical compression. We've got a reflection over the Y, and we've gone up two, which means your new origin is up two which means your horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. So our points from our parent function are going to be in relation to that 0, 2 point. Parent function goes through 0, 1, 1 comma the base, negative 1, 1 over the base, and then I'm also going to do the base squared. Then let's see how we need to change those points. Reflect it over the x, and vertical compression means I'm going to multiply those to that second column by negative one-half. Reflection over the y means I'm also going to change the signs of those first numbers. So I'm going to go over zero, down a half, left one, down two, right one, down an eighth. And you see what I'm talking about with those fractions, it can get really hard to tell. And then left two, down eight. Domain is negative infinity to infinity. Range is negative infinity to that asymptote. And then as x approaches negative infinity, as my x's get smaller, the y's are getting smaller. As my x's get bigger, the y's are approaching 2. All right, last one. Base is... 1 half, which again, that's going to be look kind of like a reflection over the y. Instead of going showing growth, it's going to show decay. But when we click those parent function points, that'll make it clear as well. It's got a vertical stretch. It's gone right 2 and down 4. So right 2, down 4 is my new 0, 0. So everything's going to be in relation to that to negative four point. Parent function, we go over zero, up one. Right one up the base. Left one, the reciprocal of the base. So that's gonna be two. And normally we do the base squared, but that's gonna be a really small number to graph. So instead I'm gonna use negative two because that's gonna be the reciprocal squared, which is four. And that's just gonna be an easier point to see. Now you really only need three points to have a good graph. I like to include that fourth though, just to make it a little bit more clear. All right, we've got that vertical stretch we need to consider. So we need to multiply and not use an eraser. <laughs> multiply by three. So from that star over zero up three, right one up one and a half, left one up six, and left two up 12, which is almost off my graph. And that's my exponential function. Last features, domain, range, and then end behavior. So as my x's get smaller, y is approaching positive infinity. As the x's get bigger, the y's are approaching negative 4. All right, so your to-do for today is actually going to look a little bit different again. Uh, so already did the Ed Puzzle, hopefully, um, answer the questions that went with that.
The practice problems, it's only four questions, uh, so really, really short. So in addition to those practice problems, there is a Desmos activity that's linked on Schoology. Now, on that activity, I need to give you guys a couple hints. First of all, you only have to do slides 8 through 12. All of the introduction slides are what we usually have, and that's just for you to kind of experiment and get some more information. You can move those sliders, see how it changes your graph, see what effects it has. Uh, so that, those are optional. Those just gives you guys a chance to see more about these functions. 8 through 12 is what's actually going to get looked at for grades. On those, um, when you get to those slides, the first two are just multiple choice. The last three, it's the kind of questions we usually have. We're going to see kind of that dotted line graph. Uh, and you're also going to see the asymptote. And you have to write the equation that fills in that dotted line. Now, I'll tell you guys a couple hints. First of all, you need to read the words that are written on the left side because that's going to tell you what the base is. If you don't know the base, it's going to be really hard to write these. I'm also going to tell you none of the graphs are going to have vertical or horizontal stretches or compressions. There will be no stretches or compressions, either vertical or horizontal, on any of these graphs. The last thing, once you find the correct equation, it'll fill in that dotted line with that solid line. The asymptote will not get filled in. Okay, The asymptote is just there to help you guys figure out what the equation is. So again, slides 8 through 12. Look for the base in the directions. And then there's only going to be reflections and shifts whenever you write those equations. All right, if you need help, you've got a couple options. You can email me. You can fill out that video request. Or you can join that Zoom session uh, that's going to be from 2 to 3. Uh, once you're done with all that, you can do that week 3 assessment, which is going to include the stuff from Tuesday as well. All right, so let me know if you guys have any questions.